Let's take a look at a basic property of springs. Here we have a spring that's attached to a post and we're going to pull back on it with a force sensor that measures the tension in the spring or how much force we need to uh, hold the spring in that position. And so this is the spring in its relaxed position and the force sensor is reading zero. So let's pull it back to the two centimeter mark after we record the force reading at x equals zero. And now the force sensor is reading six newtons. So it requires six newtons to hold it here. That would mean there's six newtons of tension in the spring. And so this post is actually pulling back in this direction at six newtons. And so we record that. So at the two centimeter point, it requires six newtons and that would be 0.02 meters. Now if we pull it back further, I think you know what's going to happen. The force from the spring goes up. And so at the 4 centimeter or 0.04 meter uh, point, it requires 12 newtons to hold it there. Let's pull it back now to 6 centimeters. And now the force sensor is reading 18 newtons. And so let's see if we can make sense of this data. And in physics, to make sense of data, we want to do a graph. And so we graph x on the x-axis. That's the thing we were in charge of, how far back to pull it. And we graph force on the y-axis. And notice again, I have it in uh, standard uh, MKS units of meters, and then newtons for force. And there's our four points, and they form a straight line. And so the spring behaved in a very linear way, which is good news because we can write an equation for how the force varies with the stretch distance. And so in, uh, for a straight line, the standard way of writing it, y equals mx plus b, but we want to transform this uh, to say something about springs. And so instead of y, we have the force, and x is x, that's easy. Uh, the slope has a special name. It's called uh, the spring constant, or sometimes called the force constant of the spring. And so k is the spring constant. It's a little k. Uh, this also is known as Hooke's Law, named after Robert Hooke, who worked with springs trying to invent a clock that would work on a ship for determining longitude. Uh, you'll see Hooke's Law written with a minus sign here. That would be the force of the spring. The spring is pulling back in the negative x direction, um, and so the minus sign indicates the direction of spring pulls. Uh, I don't, don't really need an equation to tell me which way a spring is going to pull or push. And next we have uh, the job of determining the slope. And so for the slope, we pick two points on the line. I'm going to pick uh, x equal 0.06 and y equals 18 and x equals 0 and y equals 0. And when we uh, determine the slope, we get 300. And watch the units here. We have newtons on, in the numerator, meters in the denominator, so newtons per meter. So the spring constant tells me how much force would be required to stretch the spring one meter. Even though I doubt we could stretch this particular spring one meter, uh, you can imagine it. And we'd require a considerable amount of force there. And so now we can write our equation for this particular spring is the force is 300x. And so this is a linear spring, a spring that obeys Hooke's law. So let's use it to make a prediction. And so what if I were to stretch the spring out here to 8 centimeters? How much force would that require? You can probably just guess at that, but imagine if the numbers weren't so nice here. And so I have the data table filled in at 0.08. What are we going to put here for the force? Well, we first make sure we put x in terms of meters, and then we can use our equation and put in 0.08 for x, and we get 24 newtons. And so that's a basic sort of Hooke's Law um, problem you'll need to know how to do. Uh, another thing we're going to do in the next one is talk about elastic potential energy. And elastic potential energy can be, term be determined from this graph. The work that I do is equal to the change in elastic potential energy or the elastic potential energy that's going to be in the spring. And so elastic potential is U sub E. But as I pull, the force gets greater and greater. 
So the work is not just the force times the distance. The work is the area under the curve here. And so uh, work is the area. And we have a triangle here. And so it's one half the base times the height. And in this case, the base is our x. And so instead of 0 0.06, let's just call it generic x for whatever distance we stretch the spring. And then the height, well, the equation of this line is f equals kx. And so at some x point, our, the height of the triangle is going to be kx. And so the area of this triangle is one half the base x times the height kx. And that's normally written as one half kx squared. And so both equations you need to know about springs, linear springs, the potential energy is one half kx squared, and the force is proportional to x, f equals kx.